Hey everyone, just happy to announce that Haven Cottage Event Center is opening in late spring of this year in McKinney. Haven Cottage is an event center for small to medium-sized occasions in a country setting minutes away from the city. Use the facility for a conference, art exhibition, and multi-purpose meetings, or just celebrate your family's joyous events exactly how you want to. Everything you need to know to get in touch with them is all in the description, okay? Email, phone, all right? Check them out, see what's up, maybe reserve something, who knows, whatever it is, check it out. All right, enjoy the episode. Podcast, podcast, one more podcast, 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 one more podcast, podcast. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the One More Podcast podcast. Uh, we are here with uh, four people total, um, and I will rank them uh, for my bestest best friend to my most hated, I hate that person in the entire world friend. And uh, starting off at number one as the bestest, bestest friend ever is the two Evans, our number one bestest, bestest. Kind of figure where this and, is going. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, going down the list, uh, we have my cat, B.V. Harper Parker. And then going down that list, probably my Xbox. Uh, go a little further down the list, you know, I got my PC and then my refrigerator, water bottles, uh, an assortment of other things that I have in my house. And then all the way down, the very, very but like to the point where you just gotta say, "Why even bother?" Is Blake? When did I become the Toby of this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you picked I, up on that. How did that happen? You picked up on that, Blake. I want to know why I have to share my share my spot at the top of the list. That's all. That's I a good question. Know. Both yeah. of you stop complaining. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't. I'm below his I didn't even say <laughs> I don't even say anything. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just feel like a, with a good dynamic of podcast, you have to have the Michael Scott, you have to have the Ryan slash Jim dynamic, and you have to always have a Toby. Yeah, fuck you, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, welcome back. Um, we'll, we'll we'll do that over. I'm sorry. We'll give you a proper no, introduction. No, 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 That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfectly fine with me. Oh, I'm messing things up already. You'd think yes. after like so many months of doing this, I, I wouldn't mess up my microphone, but it happens anyways. So, um, guess what, guys? What? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna brag about it a little bit. Oh, Humble okay. brag. Here, here we go. go. <laughs> so, uh, I took my practice GMAT test mm-hmm. and I improved uh, severely. I got a 610, which uh, out of 800 is a pretty solid score. Yeah, for nine. Um, yeah. Thank Man, you. That's like a 75. Nice. Well, hey, it's not I'm like just a 75. Kidding. I'm just it's kidding. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if anything, it's like a 79. 79 to 80. Pushing 81. Well, out of 800, I'm just, I'm just that's, that's, that's an 81. That's an 81. really? It's an 80.5. Congrats. I can't do math. I that's should fine. probably know how to do math if I to take the GMAT. So well, maybe that's what killed you. You said it was a 610? Oh, do, oh, yeah, 610 out of 800, yeah. Okay, so that, that's definitely like a 76. Okay, well, then, oh, never mind. Yeah, I, I hate myself more than I normally do. But anyways, well, I improved no, dude, severely. Good job. I good job. severely yeah. improved because uh, I got uh, 440 on the first test. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is definitely yeah, a big spike. Definitely a... Big improvements here. That is so, really good. Good job, man. Um. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Does anyone else have any humble brags that they have recently that they want to? Evan, maybe work-related humble brags. I got a promotion. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, this lucky then... son of a gun gets to work from home now. Yeah. Nah. Ha- okay. And so that's you said that was like, but it's gonna happen in a couple months though. It's gonna start in like February. Okay. Cool. 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 Like yep. anything in your life that you want to humble brag? I want to make us feel good because you know before we were listening to some really depressing music, it was like and then literally you just <laughs> <laughs> told me that I'm less less you than know, less the, important than inanimate objects, less than dirt. Essentially, really is the the, the summary. takeaway here. The takeaway is people, if you're gonna like close out of the podcast right now, just know that Blake is less than dirt. That's that's really whoa, it. yeah. Jeez, well, I got, dude, that I got really Blake. mean, dude. dude I Savagery. Hate. Blake has never been there in my life oh for my me. God. He You're has right. never offered any words of wisdom. He has uh, never been there for me to complain to. Um, he has never, ever, ever once uh, put me before him. Dude, if I was Blake, I'd be walking out the fucking door right now. I mean, no, because I got a rebuttal here in a second. Oh, gosh. All right. What's your rebuttal, oh, Blake? Oh, God. No, you're not done. Continue. Oh, no, I'm done. I'm, <laughs> Are you I'm, sure? I'm, I've done a good solid couple minutes right. of... Just before I start, okay. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. You sure you want me to do this? No, I don't want you to do this. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. You should um, do it anyway. No. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, anything, Blake? Anything? Tear this dick Say you're pieces. happy. How was, uh, uh, you didn't go to the concert with us, so how was that weekend? Uh, <laughs> it was fine. You know, just girlfriend was 
starting up school and Humble she brag. was having <laughs> no brag. Um, and she wasn't feeling well either, so it was you oh, okay. Know, so just had, kind of a chill. Yep, right. ne- needed the man there. So sure, of course. Nothing, nothing other significant in your life. Um, no. Okay. Wow. Pretty. Right. Work is stressful. Beer is cold, and people are crazy. But you don't drink beer anymore. I know. I don't. Because you had that accident. <laughs> this is this is Ever where it's the accident. <laughs> Ever since the- we just let people stew on that, to just wondering what the hell happened to Blake. <laughs> just cut so- the podcast off right there. <laughs> Ever since the accident, <laughs> we'll get back to Blake's accident next week. Yes, stay tuned. Um, no, but uh, you are losing weight and you're running. I am. That's a thing. That's yes. a, that's an accomplishment, dude. Running sure. fucking sucks. It is. It does. Yeah. It's it's brutal. But in high school, I was. A decent, decent runner for a fat kid, so mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't too hard to get back into the swing of things, especially because I work out or I work outside and it's all day walking yeah. and Did working you know your on mile, cars. Mileage or whatever. You, like you when I was mile? in high school, or yeah. or do you, do you know on average now? On average now, it's probably like a six fifty liar. seven liar. I'll you do not right do night. a six fifty mile. Dude, yeah, my you fastest mile in high school was a five thirty five. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Then you were not fat at all, Blake. No, no sir. I, you got to trust me. No, sir. Do you know what my minute mile was? It was like twelve, if that. Like, well, yeah. maybe, uh, you gotta <laughs> maybe like you gotta 50. also take into account that I was in baseball and football, and so though I had some chubbiness on me, it, it I, I, underneath that Man was. Knows how to run was an uh, interior I'm that s- was pretty athletic so i'm i'm legitimately jealous real quick before we i, I want to kind of jump into this topic real quick evan do you have anything any uh oh, happiness accomplishments i mean school brags? started up again and i haven't been in school for a while so getting back into that so that's, that's good that's, that's awesome. awesome yeah just doing basics right now or uh, yeah right now i'm basically just taking a uh a computer science course just nice get back into the swing of things nice awesome see that's awesome see we have all positive things going on yes we do now to crap on blake for a little bit more um wow. okay no, no no so i i'm so fascinated with the people in middle school high school and college athletic sports that can maintain like a five minute mile and i know even like out for track and stuff like that you have to do even less than a five minute mile i don't understand the discipline about that because well, a lot of it in terms of how in terms of having the athletic ability is genetics so like my dad in high school was for he went varsity all four years of cross country and went to state for three of those right and that dude's average mile was like a 440 wow and whenever he would compete in meets and do his one mile he would get down to like a 423 so he's just constantly sprinting through this oh yeah like in your mile would you be just be constantly sprinting no so you have to pace yourself so the first lap you want to do about 95 percent Okay. You want to give it as much as you can to get out ahead in front of everybody sure and then you can tone it back down to around an 80 on the second lap, and then you have to build up a little bit more to about an eighty-five to ninety. But you're never- and then on that last lap, you are balls out. Nothing, you know, you could pass out at the finish line as long as you make it there. Right. That's how fast you. So need you're to never run. doing a jog. You're always like faster than. Well, now I'm doing a jog, but back in back in the day, no, right. there was never a time for a brisk jog. To, See, that just, on your mile, but like, we also did three mile runs every Wednesday. Wow! So it was it was just typical and after every baseball game if you pitched or threw a lot you would have to run three miles so it was it's just it is what it is you needed to stay in shape and get the lactic acid out of your system that sounds horrible it I, wasn't. Don't, it was I, I don't understand because like for me uh whenever a while back uh the for the new year's resolution i had to lose weight because mm-hmm. i was like i stepped on the scale i was like oh that's not a weight that i am very proud of and so i uh, uh i had some work buddies and we went to uh, 24 hour fitness to do it and originally we were just lifting weights and stuff like that, which is fine. Like I'm totally fine lifting weights. You know, push push my uh, uh, strength, uh, push my uh, core for our squats and legs and whatever. Right. Push all that. That's fine. But like when it comes to stamina and stuff like that, I've always had an issue. Mm-hmm. It's it's like on the treadmill, I would have to like and one okay one thing I, I think is kind of interesting. Um, do you guys have you ever guys like did treadmill stuff? Like I know yeah, it's like so for that. like <clears throat> exercise or just for just a moment in time. Because for me, whenever I go on a treadmill, I always have to be watching something. Ever since I started watching stuff, I just I can't like not watch things on the treadmill because like it just distracts me and it's nice and it's good. So uh, mm-hmm. same thing for you guys. I I, just, I know some people music, are different. Music for me. music. Okay, yeah. interesting. I just I don't know. Blake, for you, I don't run on treadmills. Oh, you run. You outside. burn more calories and you build you really, up your strength. Is that really, like really, mm-hmm. like let's let's mm-hmm. no BS here. Do you really burn more calories outside? Mm-hmm. Why? Is well, one like, because it's never level. 
Okay. The ground that you're running on is in every level. True. The elements cause you to push yourself harder. So okay. if there's some wind or whatever, you have to push yourself. Okay. Um, and a treadmill, it gives you an easy opportunity to just, you know, you can still be working out, but in terms of pushing yourself, you have to force yourself to push a button. You have to wait for it to get up to 10 or mm-hmm. 11 when you want to sprint the last quarter mile or whatever. Whereas mm-hmm. outside, you have to struggle with every footstep may be different you may be on grass for a half a mile then you have to be on concrete and it just it builds up the bottom of your feet and all the way up to your calves and your thighs much more than running on a treadmill would now don't get me wrong if you make the incline on the treadmill you Mm -hmm. know a decent way up and you crank that son of a bitch up to 10 Mm -hmm. and you keep on going you'll you'll burn a bunch of calories but if you do it outside you you generally burn more and you push yeah. yourself harder i think i think within the three months or three four months that i was working out um and just doing because I, I had to push myself for the cardio i think i dropped like 20 to 30 pounds or something like mm-hmm. that so i um, definitely felt really good and then i lost it now i'm like three million pounds which is unfortunate so <laughs> um anyways uh okay so i wanted to talk about and I, I know this has kind of been beaten to death on like literally everything in terms of um social media and whatever else um, but I kind of want to connect it also to a more holistic, uh, holistic, is that the right word? Holistic, more. I don't know what worldly, you're leading to, worldly, so I don't know worldly, how to answer worldly that. Worldly view, I guess. Is, okay. is that, That'll work. Like, start, you start small with this one instance, but then you connect it to it a encompasses much larger. It com- larger... encompasses a larger holistic view. Is that, okay. is that sure. right? Yeah. Is that we good? understand where you're coming from. No, smell, I'm, just, I'm we, just, is that proper? Cause, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. We smell what you're, you're stepping God, in. Continue. I'm so sorry. Jeez Louise. I'm just trying to say <laughs> things. So I, I don't know. Anyways, because I say a lot of words. I feel like just I'm an empty just vessel that just spews out words. Evan's like hating me for doing this. So he's <laughs> <laughs> like, God, just get to the point. Please hurry up. Jeez. Anyways. So uh, um, the whole Logan Paul thing, um, we, we talked about that. I don't want to talk yeah. about them. Uh, his instances there like are you familiar with the logan paul stuff uh so is that not... the dude that took a video of the dude in japan that killed the himself yeah. yeah okay so uh, that someone... that's really all that that instance was okay so he took a hiatus he took i don't know however long uh hiatus for but now he's back did you guys see his return video thing or hear about it or anything like that no nothing okay all right so um and keep in mind my my question and kind of the concept that i want to cover is can people come back can can someone make a comeback uh, in uh, a more realistic personal life? So friends, uh, family, whatever, or, you know, can media icons come back? So essentially in this video, um, highlight bullet points. Um, he, he talks about, quote unquote, how much he's uh, learned and uh, matured and aged. Um, second point, um, he is donating a million dollars to, I believe it's like another, it's a suicide prevention association. I forget the specific one. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's the actual hotline, but it um, still baffles me that people can make that sum of money doing what he does. But, oh yeah, no, for sure. With, like <laughs> sponsors and ads, and that's totally a different conversation yeah, there, but nuts. it's, it's insane. But, um, so yeah, so, uh, doing that, um, a million dollars. Um, and then he also talked to some people, uh, like he, uh, and I didn't even know this was a thing, but. Um, he spoke to um, the guy who apparently jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and survived or something like that. Um, I, I don't know if it's a one guy did it and he's the only one that survived or he's one of the people who have survived. But he essentially talked to uh, people who have either been affected by depression and tried to commit suicide. Or I think he might I think he talked to an expert or a quote unquote expert on the issues and stuff like that. So and, and on top of that. Um, he, he says he's kind of changing, he's going to change how he does his vlogs and stuff like that to be more socially aware. So, mm. uh, first impressions, do you buy it? Do you not? Is it cause I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, anytime you do kind of the lecture circuit for, uh, coming back or saying, I'm sorry or whatever, uh, a lot of people have skepticism versus, um, people are like, Oh, we love it. It's okay. We'll, we'll accept you fully, full heartedly. I personally think anybody can come back but they're going to have a lot of people who just hate them like outwardly like like, sure. like people who would be like the silent majority uh-huh. are now actually talking about it but people can still come back like like chris brown yeah that's right he did uh, uh yeah be- beat the shit out of rihanna i don't know well, but, could we okay. see kevin spacey coming back in the next 10 15 years Five years, no. Ten years, maybe. Fifteen years. You think so? Probably. Well, and and I forget. I forget if we spoke specifically on it, but I think now, uh, especially like Kevin Spacey and Lucy K and all them kind of people, um, they're going to be. I think they're going to do more behind the scenes stuff. 
they'll just they'll tag their name but not their face and i think i think yeah. that's the direction that mm. they'll probably do is because as long as they're not center focused and they're not you know hey this is a louis ck super produced and maybe he does like an anonymous uh, production credit or something like that or whatever however you do it um i think that's how he's going to continue his work um but i mean and and, and take taking it less extreme you know you know, some kid does something stupid, puts it on YouTube, and yeah. totally regrets it. You know, is is that worth uh, his? Are, do do you accept his apologies? Do you, is that something that you can do? Like, uh, per- personally, do you guys? I, well, would here's I how I look would... at it: the kid's a twenty-something-year-old kid uh-huh. who got millions we'll of dollars. Do- sorry, man. No, you're no worries. Who no got worries. millions of dollars for doing, you know, s- crap like that? You know, it's he's a kid. Like that, yeah, he's, he, he's a kid. He's, he's He's our age. Like, could all all four of us, if we made a mistake like that, we would beg for family, friends, fans to forgive us so we can move on with our lives. Like, let's. Of course, what he did was wrong, and there are things that I think are unforgivable, mm-hmm. but that is not one of them. Um, now, the question co- that I'm asking is, is there even a need for him in the marketplace of YouTube? Like how big it, I, I don't I've only seen him from Vine. Mm-hmm. I don't know much about him on YouTube or whatever. But how big is this well, dude and how much of a need is he to the well, to the marketplace? For well, that? Long story. Long story short, um, he came from Vine, moved to YouTube, him and his brother. I think they've got somewhere in monks like 10 to 12 million subscribers. OK. Um, and they're, they were on the quote unquote Google preferred, uh, uh, ad, uh, ad block. So essentially the top tier, uh, the high pay, highest paying ads go to their videos. Um, and so they're very much, uh, encompassing a large market. Granted that age market might be Aren't 10 they to 15 year olds tweens or whatever. Yeah. Around that time. But, um, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all, you can always kind of go back to, um, what we see in our lives and what 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 is uh, uh, in our society, I guess is the best way to put it, um, is always demanded by the market. Right. It's always demanded by uh, universally what we want. So, Evan, you were going to say something before Blake totally rudely cut you off? <laughs> he, I'm sorry. He really didn't. It's all right. Um, I would say that coming back to the question of uh, can we forgive someone like this, mm-hmm. I would say that it's definitely something that um, that if they come out apologetic for it i would not immediately just turn around and say oh, okay you're um everything is forgiven you um you didn't really know what you were doing that's all well and good i don't think you can give them a full pardon for that i think you, i think sure. that and I, I think this is true for a large number of people we're going to have to see a continuing effort like there has to be some evidence that this is a change and not like the say the million dollar donation that you mentioned, mm-hmm. that's that's the not really way to do it. yeah that's um that that can't be all you do because then it just seems like you're just trying to like kind of to just patch the holes yeah. and then keep going on with what you were doing. Well, yeah. well, but like uh, what if so? What if this was like a friend of yours? And so a friend, you know, I'm I'm trying to think of a situation that'd be kind of sip, not as extreme, but not, you know, similarly on par to what this example was. So like let's say let, okay so. Let's say you tell a friend something really personal, really uh, private, and you you want to keep this between you and him because you confided to them for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And then this person goes and puts and it on Twitter. Puts it on Twitter and like, hey, look, makes fun of you for it, and blah 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 blah. And it's just this one instance. But then they say, oh, hey man, let me just like buy you dinner or something, or let me let me buy you something to for you know, is that the? I don't I don't see that as the same equivalent. So no, that's if why someone always, did that to me, they'd be out of my life. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. That's sure. super fucked up. Yeah, straight up. If, do, if, do, if I'm gonna legit... if I'm gonna tell you something personal about myself, and you're gonna turn around and like tell everybody and make fun of me for it, that mm-hmm. just that just shows me that you're just a shitty person. Well, I, I agree. Nothing that's cool about you will make up for the fact that you are just shitty. No, I agree. But I mean, when you when you said the the totally cut out of your life, like you just severed ties, don't ever talk to him ever again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if, if someone's gonna treat me like that, it's not worth my time. Well, because. I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm on your side. I, I do agree that, you know, if someone is not your friend and it obviously has proven either one or two times, however many, unfortunately, how, however many times that happens, definitely don't confide in them. But I just and, – and it was kind of interesting because I was talking to one of my friends about this where uh, um, both in the relationship aspect and as a friendship aspect, can you just cut ties? Can you just sever the cord and say, you know what? I'm not talking to you. You text me, I'm not going to respond. You message me, I'm not going <laughs> to view it. You yeah. blah, 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 you whatever. 
I'm not going to do it. And at first, I, I always said, yeah, I can I can do that. that that's, that's easy. That's no problem. Whatever. But uh, in, in realistically, I've had a situation where that happens, and it, I just – I couldn't do it. I, I, I just couldn't. And I, I, I have changed my opinion, at least now, uh, that I don't think I can cut people out of my life. I can – not talk to them and I cannot actively engage them. But if they're going to text me, I'm going to say, "Oh, I'm good. Hey, how you doing? Whatever. I'm, I'll be polite. Kind of, kind of like a weird divorce where you still have to be civil because of the kid, but you're not ever going to, you know, uh, be active in their life or whatever." So I, I don't know. So Blake, you're like shaking your head because you agree, or you're just saying, "Well, like, so after high school, I my friend group went down to where it's stayed for the past four years. Mm-hmm. My six best friends, and that's all I really need. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely cut ties with, you know, guys on the baseball team that we were friends because we played baseball together. Well, but is that is that just time moves on? No, it was it was a a legitimate process of me. It it came at the time where I deleted all my social media too. And I so, hate the fact that he did that. There's so many times fine. I want to send you something on Facebook or whatever, and that's I'm just fine. like, I have to text it to him. And that that's means fine. I'm save the video and <laughs> text it to him on the iMessage. And that's fine. I'm sorry. But sorry. it it got to no, I'm not. It got to a point <laughs> where I had to figure out why are my friends with these guys? Mm-hmm. What did they? What have they offered me in high school versus what I've done? Mm-hmm. Like it it got to a point where most of them, except for two the guys on the baseball team that I think I'll be friends with the rest of my life. But it got to the point where I was like, I don't, I don't need these guys. I mean, they were fun, but I'm not, you know, and one of them texted me a couple of, couple of weeks ago, but it was, and you didn't respond. No, really? No, just be out of, out of, uh, like it's been, it's been four years, dude. Like, well, I mean, I've I've texted you and wished you happy birthday. Oh, so, okay. So you've actively, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, so, sorry, so man. So you put in the effort, but they didn't receive yeah, it. And now they're trying. It's like, no, man, I'm sorry. I don't, if you were, if you were there before, then yeah, let's reconnect. Let's go grab a beer or do whatever. But now it's, I don't, I don't need that. Like I've got my friends that, and that's pretty much all I need right now. Well, and you don't think, and I mean, any of you guys chime in if you want, um, just old friends that you knew. Um, and you, you were, I'll, you were friendly I'll, and I'll stuff. I'll be polite. I'll say hi or whatever. But, but like, do, you, do you think you could rekindle something like that? Where it's like you were good friends in high school, but it was kind of like one of those friendships no. where you just friends in high school. You didn't hang out outside of high school. And then they, well, that's what I'm saying. Were... I went to, I went to dinner with a buddy to a buddy, one of my best friends. And then one of the other guys on the baseball team. Mm-hmm. And it was so damn awkward. Really? Like, cause in four years of college, you change so much and well, you, you're a new person, different interests. You don't laugh about the same shit you did when you were a senior. You don't think st- other stuff is funny. And it, I just saw that gap between us and I was like this. Well, but, I, but, that's, I could, but that's, but that's okay because you gave him a chance at least, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying, so Evan, you're mm-hmm. friends with Evan and you guys are friends all throughout high school, and then you guys just stop talking. No, no, no empathy or, or, or no uh, animosity or anything like that. Um, you just sure. stop talking, and then all of a sudden, twelve years later, Evan's like, "Hey, Evan, how you doing?" And then you just say, "Like, oh man, we haven't talked. You're probably different. You're weird. Blah 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 blah. I'm not gonna talk to you." Or like, how? Like, because because that's the thing. I'll always literally people will text me, and I won't have their phone number in. And obviously, this is either someone that I need, wanted to stop talking to because either i didn't think it was a good relationship or a good friendship or whatever it is but if they randomly text me i'm not gonna not text them back because obviously they have some kind of vested interest in either do they want something from me do they want to just talk whatever it is i I think i'm not i'm not gonna immediately shun that off until i know what the situation is obviously but you know i'll never not text someone back i I think that's that's kind of call back text back respond back whatever it is um I don't think I'll never not do that. And so I just, I think it's interesting how some people can like you guys, cause yeah. you guys are all heartless fiends. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think just... in the, I think in the scenario you mentioned where, if, where like it was somebody that I, that I was actually like fairly good friends with in school, like kind of the situation you were talking earlier where mostly you would just like talk in class and what have mm-hmm. you. I would pro I would probably like, I would probably like you were saying, just, I would respond. I would, um, I would probably talk to them a bit, but mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't very actively, pursue that okay like i would i would kind of just um just respond as as it was going for the most sure. part so do you guys is it hard for you guys to keep friendships at all not really i 
I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, me, I've I, known you for how long now? Well, okay. But, okay. <laughs> but, that's, but that's, that's the difference, though, Evan, because we knew each other in elementary school, mm-hmm. and then we knew each other in middle no. school. And then, and then there was admittedly a fairly long period where we long, just kind of long, long time where yeah. I, I think I saw you come on Xbox every now and then, and that's about it. That was about it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so obviously now, um, you know, we're, we're put in a situation where I, I feel like we've rekindled that just like that, and there's mm-hmm. as if no time's gone by, which I love that. Inf- just real yeah. quick, I love the friendships, good, bad, great, horrible, whatever it is. It just doesn't matter what time length happens. Whenever immediately you see them again, it's just back to where that, you were. That happened with you and I. Definitely. It was for like sure. fucking knock on sure. your door at UNT and open it. And it's like, dude, we should put together a D&D group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, it was uh, – and, and, and that's what I love. But but outside of that, I, I feel like a, you know, a lot of people that I know, um, I have to constantly remember to just talk to them. And, like, mm. and, and, and I, I wouldn't say I'm just like self-absorbed with my life that like, oh, I, I don't have time for other people. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, sure, I'm busy and sure, I'm trying to do stuff and sure, I'm trying to get my life on a certain track. But like, if I don't, you know, um, I have a friend uh, from Frisco that if I don't remember to text him, we won't talk. And that's yeah. it. And it, But when I text him or call him or say, hey, what's up? Then sure, we'll have a conversation, whatever, whatever. But it's like, I'll have to like, oh, crap, I haven't talked to blah, blah, blah for, you know, two weeks now. Oh, I can't believe I'm such a horrible person. So you guys share that, that similar thing? Or? That normally I don't get. I'm typically not not the one to initiate that sort of oh people that are sort of hitting thing. you up not not often but oh, well, but yeah but like, I mean, typically... like out of the friendships people will uh engage you or yeah most typically that's the case yes. yeah or like if, if that's somebody that yes somebody that i knew for quite uh for quite some quite some time in high school just sure. and we just just been separate for a while i'm not i'm not typically the one that's gonna like go back through oh hey i i knew uh like jill and bob let's see what they're doing right not that's you're, not really that's something not. i engage in very much okay blake please tell me you're the type of person that has to text people because people don't text you please come on i'm not the only, i'm not the only one who's like it depends so like with you we've gotten into this alma and routine isn't the good word but it's it, it a looking a, a look looking forward to every week hanging out and it's mm. And it's it's awesome, but when I got buddies in college that you know that are all cr- halfway across the country or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, I gotta I gotta remember. Oh shit, Kendall, his football season's coming up. Got to make sure text him good luck, ask him how every game goes or whatever. Okay, good. Um, all right, Josh, how his uh, internships or whatever going? Sure. Matt, blah blah blah. Connor, blah blah blah. Same thing. Right. So yeah, I'll. If it's my close niche of friends, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm gonna text them. Well, okay, but I mean, um, and well, I guess it's kind of it's it's hard to, for you to answer it just because I feel like you've got your. Because with me, I, I wouldn't say I'm like a whore, but very much I'm. I like and <laughs> and I guess this kind of goes back to you know I'll, I'll never not respond to somebody, but um, I'm definitely old friends, new friends, whatever it is, it's all great. Obviously there's a level of openness that I will have with the, the tiered of friendship, but you know, you know, Joe Blow, who I met, uh, I had a couple classes with him at UNT or something. I'll be like, Oh yeah, dude, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And then he'll either exchange numbers or all whatever. And then what happens from there? I don't know, but it's, it's very much this kind of, uh, what is this? What? I don't know. Like it's a river, I guess is the best weird way. It's just a flow of, there, there's no, there's no way I'm gonna not uh, stop flowing. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. You're constantly reaching out, trying to, you well, know, and, rekindle or whatever. Well, but it's not even I'm, con- I'm not I'm tr- like, I can't speak. It's not that I'm constantly trying to reach out. It's as if I go to Walmart and oh hey, it's you from this thing that I knew. Whatever, I'll go and say how you doing. I'm not gonna like scour Facebook say okay who haven't I talked to in you know ten plus years. I have to randomly hit them up now. Um, you're just Mr. Popular and you run I'm into people Mr. everywhere. Po- <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just, it, that was a bad, Humble for instance. Yeah, maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe not Mr. Popular, but I think Mr. Outgoing is a fairly, fairly accurate yeah. well, description. I guess, but it's just, I don't know. And I don't, I don't know if this sounds sad or anything, but it's like, I don't, I, my, my phone, I don't really receive a lot of text me- other than, you know, the close friends and stuff like that. Um, I don't receive just random text messages from people. And I guess that's just because I was really loud and annoying in high school and no one's like, <laughs> God, that you've all kid. I really want to have a conversation <laughs> with you all. I wonder what uh, interesting and intriguing uh, can, facts he will I can hear me. him shouting through the phone now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Blake, do I, I talk really loud over the phone. Do you talk I? really loud? If, if you're in you the car, especially really like if you're in the car and you want to, 
you know, rant or something. Hey! Yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> and then you dive right in. <sighs> well, it's not a bad thing. Like I explained to you when we went to the go see uh, 12 Strong or whatever. Like, it's not a bad thing that you're, like, you're one of the few friends that, you know, with me and Matt, we'll sit down and we'll say 20 words to each other in two hours. And that's our friendship. Like, that's that's how we roll. Mm -hmm. But with you, like, it's your balls to the wall. And that's that's part of the reason why you're upper tier. Good. It's and why we're here doing that. a podcast. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Literally, I annoy you guys to do it. Hey, guys, I need something for Friday. Please, 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 please. Hey, all right. I, you don't even have to annoy I, us. You're just like, hey, you guys on a podcast this, day, this this day? Oh, no, we're busy. Okay, how about this day? Yeah, sure. Okay. That's cool. annoying. See you then. That's, that's pushy. No, that not, not, pushy. Not, not at all. That, okay. So, how, no, what? Speaking of, though, guys. <laughs> you all <laughs> so <laughs> what, So, what, at one point, and we'll exclude me, exclude my uh, uh, personality. Done. And, um, thank you. <laughs> you guys. Uh, at what point is it too annoying that someone's either trying to bother you, talk to you, text you, slash, when do you need to be on your own? I think if it's like someone, if it's like a best friend and they text me, I'll get back to them within a couple hours. Sure. If they're like a decent friend, yeah. I'll probably get back to them within 24 hours. If okay. they're like a, hey man, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> How's life? Type of friend where it's like. I hate those conversations. Yeah, so I, do I. But if it's like that kind of friend, it's like. If I respond to you in, in in a week, yeah, you're you're lucky. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, okay. Real, I just asked a question, but I'm gonna move on to a new thing because I just thought of this because you said it. I hate the the chit chat of the hey, how you doing? What's up? I just yeah, it's, it's called so, idle chit chat. Well, I hate it. I uh -huh. I've, and and I like I'm I'm seriously not trying to like make myself sound superior, but I just feel like I'm so above that because it's like <laughs> I'm not I'm not here. Ooh. Well, <laughs> Cue I'm the violins. <laughs> I'm not here to text you like, hey, how's the weather? What's up? Blah. Like, I'm like legitimately like, let's jump into it. Let's like, and again, let's, as Blake says, it balls to the wall. Like, I'm ready to, to dive in and say, okay, what what scares you? What what are your Jesus. deep, darkest personal fears? Like, uh, oh, oh, how do you I feel mean, about well, abortion? <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's literally my opener to text. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, Joe Schmo, You just match with weeks. blank. How do you feel about abortion? Feel about abortion. Um, no, I, I don't know. I just, I think it's, and it, and I guess, do, I get bored. Do you guys get bored in conversation and stuff like that? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Bored. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm texting my girlfriend like, "Hey, I'll, I'll text you back in a few." Oh yeah. Like this is, like it got, it gets to a point where it's like. Well, is that because ooh. you guys are comfortable with each other, or just like that's you and you, day one you were doing it versus? Well, you know, I don't. Like one, I don't like talking to talking in general. Sure. Like unless it's you know bros or just me and my girl. But sure. if the text messages are like, "Hey, what's up? Not much. You cool? How was work? Like you like no? I hate those conversations. No, 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 no. no. Give. So I'll I'll call you after work. I'll yeah. call you after work. That's usually what I tell her. Okay. Like I'll, I'll give you a call after work, but so I'm not gonna look at my phone to see a response that says. Okay, babe. It's yeah. like no. I'll 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 let you know when I'm off. All right. So down the line, Evan, texting or calling? No, oh, jeez. <laughs> Call, calling does also include like Discord, Skype, sure. that kind of stuff. Yeah, calling. All right, Blake, texting or calling? Um, both. It's gonna be both. Nope. You have to choose one. Bigger, the biggest, more. If if you then could calling. never do one, but you can only do the other, which one would it be? Calling. Calling, Evan. Well, I'm not going to choose, like, one or the other. You I'm have like, to. No, no, I'm fucking not. Why? You said texting or calling isn't, like, which one would I rather do. Yeah. And I would rather text because it's more convenient. But, but why? I will also call. But what – okay, so in, in, in a conversation and in a relationship, either friendship or uh, uh, intimate, what do you gain more from? I feel like I gain more from calling. Yeah, if I'm gonna you talk probably to you. do gain more from calling, but I said for convenience. Well, You didn't say well, for what reason. No, then, fine. Then you pick one. You, you have to pick well, one. Well, no, he does have a point because, like, in the in the context of just like just communicating with someone you haven't seen in a while, it is convenient to text because you don't know what people's schedules are. There's not always time to coordinate a call, this. whereas well, you can just you can just send a text. They'll get back to you when you get back to you, and then if there's if there's nothing urgent that needs to be talked about, that's you see, then kind like, of all you why, need to do. Okay, then send an email. I feel like that's what <laughs> no. emails are. For. I feel like, like that's why what, would I okay, why would I pull up my email you're, you're on my phone like, and you're send not, an email when you're I can not send wrong, a text? But much fewer people the have a catalog of people's email addresses no, and also their this. phone numbers. Yeah. Also like like, like like um, what do you what you said? The, no, having the catalog, oh, yeah. Yeah, Okay, so you're agreeing with that. Yeah. Sorry, you said you all the have I, a Rolodex. 
I, I miss I, I that would be cool. I, I I'm I'm sad that I missed that time of like having rolodexes and like uh, uh emails and faxes and like sending PDAs. letters and stuff like that. Yeah, dude, that'd be like that'd be cool. In no. all seriousness, Palm Pilots were the shit. But <laughs> but like but like for me, it's the if I'm at, if I'm texting someone and especially uh and, and this and this is really only with like a few friends um and it's it doesn't gauge the 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 uh the level of friendship or whatever how good the relationship is but there are just a few people that when i text them i'm texting them to set something up i'm like hey are you free this blah 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 blah, blah. okay cool no all right how about this blah, 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 blah. and that's it i'm not i can pretty safely count myself in that group yeah well, uh, <laughs> sure but okay yes but like um and you know it's no fault or anything like that but like i gain more from conversing so sure it, it, and I don't know. In high school, I remember, oh, you got to get all the girls' numbers and you got to text the girls and blah, blah, blah. And that's high school and whatever. And it's queer. And quin, bleh, cringy. Sorry, I'm trying to talk multiple words at the same time. Um, you see, that's how elevated I am is I can speak. You're words trying to talk you, multiple words at the same time. Yes, you're using, you're using your vocal cords grammar. to produce 610, vocal baby. cords. <laughs> um, no, so it's like, um, and so I guess that was just the medium that I was familiar with and comfortable with in terms of. The, the cringy awkward high school phase but now it's just like you know i don't know and and i haven't really been calling people uh and that's just my fault because i'm either listening to music or you know, watching tv or whatever and yes then yes i will agree texting is convenient oh wow but yeah right but but i will still like i've had times before where i've just paused the office and i'm just talking to insert person's name here for however long and then uh hang up the conversation so i don't i don't know i just I, I, I guess for me the value of texting has declined, and that's just because I'm weird and strange. Um, but I don't know. I mean, no, I like, like I agree with you. I would rather talk to someone on the phone than text them. It's just nice to be able to say, "Hey, man, what's up?" And then just like a couple hours later, "Oh, hey, not much. You know, what, what are you doing this weekend or whatever?" But you see, I just would rather not do that. I would rather just like at when when the day before the weekend, or if if the plan was to get to do something for the weekend, yeah. I'd rather just be like, hey, you busy this weekend? No, okay, cool. All right. Well, if that's, that's it. The day before, that's just super inconvenient. Well, no, okay, yeah. obviously plan it out. Like, hey, man. Good time management. We need to work on that. <laughs> yeah. I really do need to work on time management because I've multiple times been like, Blake, we need to do this now. And then he's like, okay. It's like, 2.30, okay. dude. <laughs> <laughs> 2.30 in the afternoon. Let's go. Yeah, Anyways. I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like if, if it's like straight up like, the tech and like I've said before, it's hey next week or or this weekend, you know, three to four days from now. Do you want to do this thing? Cool, awesome, done. That's it. And then if I wanted to talk to you later, I'll call you and say, hey, did you see the latest thing about this guy who said a thing about a thing? But I don't know. That's again, like I said for the millionth time, that's just me, mm. just kind of <laughs> a freak of nature. We all are a little bit. When did you guys get uh, smartphones? When I was a junior in high school. Ditto. Blake. Uh, believe sophomore year of high school. God, I feel like such a slut. I got my freshman year of high school, so, and it was so cool. It was such the coolest thing. I was so obsessed with it. Yeah, that was, was so that was with. yeah. That was like, like iPhone a, two or three, right? No, uh, I got a uh, Galaxy, the first Galaxy. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. yeah, that was that was back in the early days. So <laughs> when did you guys get your first phone? Uh, I had a really like shitty small one ever since I was a small kid. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, like whenever, whenever like convenient like middle school. size phone. Yeah, in, yeah. Okay. In, in my case, it was middle school because at the time I was walking to school, so that was that was more so just the thing where like emergency stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I mean, we still had full, pretty well full access to everything, so I mm. could use it for whatever else. But yeah, mainly it was a tool to just call my parents when they were at work. Hey, yeah, I got home. Sure. Like, I think seventh grade. grade. Seventh grade for phone. You guys Something text like a lot on your phone. Not a ton, no. Yeah, okay. All right. I, I, I just I, I think it's curious just I probably like started texting a lot in like tenth grade, ninth or tenth. Oh, so. so like definitely high school? Yeah. Okay. Well I kinda miss texting like, on the, uh, probably the like shitty eight. little dial pads for flip phones. I miss it so much. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time. So. Taking taking like uh five minutes to type out a ten word sentence. You see, yeah, that's great. when you knew someone was important to you. Is that you're willing to type out all those words. I remember and... there were people who would do nothing but text and they'd just be fucking doing it under the desk without even looking at it. Yep. That, I was one of those I persons. I, I was in constantly doing it, but I was definitely one of those persons just texting. Yeah, I, I didn't even send out more than like two or three texts a day, but I could still pretty easily just do that with with one hand over, under the table on the old uh, flip phone, just because. Yeah, but it's fairly to, easy to think memory. about it. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys do uh, the proper keyboarding stuff? I'm sometimes like so, the the proper hand stuff, the the where you keep your hands and then you only move your fingers. Uh, for each specific like I'm, letter, I'm typing like an essay or something. 
well, like SA or whatever or anything like that. Just if you're on the computer, yeah, it's just I become actually a habit. I should do it on my phone. You really? <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's just become a habit. Phone. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. like, but like Fat the proper thing? The whole thing. Well, no. Well, I don't know. I I feel like I, I don't do super proper. I, I, do, I do like partially. Like the, uh, the claw, the little claw. I'm just like, like I, I don't I don't ever use anything with my feet unless I'm like trying to hit a backspace or something like that. So I don't I don't know. I just. I'm, it's it depends a, it's, on it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm typing something out, yeah, I'll typically do something like that. If I'm playing like a game on my computer or something, I do this weird like almost sideways grip thing. Like if something yeah. needs me to hit the control key, I'll reach back for it with my thumb. Nice. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get like really bad arthritis later in life. <laughs> okay. I, I never. You have we had the class, but I never learned the official. Your fingers need to be on a fucking S- pause I mean, tower. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Holy shit! Oh yeah, my God. yeah. It's, I, I never learned. At that. the end of the day, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference as fucking long as you Mavis can type accurately and fairly quickly. <laughs> sure. So I don't. I don't know. I just. I think it's just so interesting how growing up there we had these integrated uh, typing and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden now it's just second nature. Oh, you don't know. You, you don't type a hundred million words a minute. Oh, well, you're just an idiot. Gosh, what do you? What do you guys type words per minute? Honestly, I don't know. I I can type really fast though. Like if if I if I have because the thing if I have the words in my head and if I know like okay yeah I need it and not just like I'm just free balling. Let's just type notes or something like that. If I know what I want to write, I I write relatively fast. Humble brag. Um, but when it's like uh, gee, let's try and think of a story. The man was walking and like I'll just type, I'll type slow just because my brain is at that <coughs> speed. So yeah, if I'm if I'm Copying something down, it's actually still not that fast because I really I'm I pay way too much attention to being accurate with it. Oh, I make so mistakes I'll go all back the time. And, so I'll go back and correct myself the moment I see something. So I don't, I only get to like thirty thirty five words per minute when I'm like copying something down. And then like you've all said, if I'm if I'm writing something like as I go, that's when I really stop and double check like all the, all my word choices. So I'm doing like ten. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I type at 87 words per minute. Nice. When I really focus. Cue music. Wait, did you like... Have <laughs> There's you like tests official, for it. Well, right. You so have you and... recently taken that test? Um, The last time I submitted a resume, which was a couple weeks ago. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's uh, actually... Here's here's how I learned how to type so goddamn fast. I used All to right. play a lot of RuneScape. And uh, so you know, you'd, like, you'd like go to the market and you'd be like, I'm selling this item for this much money and you have to keep typing it so it would stay above your character's head. So I'd so fucking just, just sit constantly. there and just... <laughs> <laughs> just got super quick and, with it. Yeah, it was like, I was like a fucking nine years old. So Can you imagine how fast our kids will be typing? Like God. by the time they're our like kids won't have second typewriters. You're right, they won't even have typewriters. Well, I say typewriters. <laughs> yes, we but... still have typewriters. Well, you, you say that, but... Touchscreens are really just generally terrible for typing. Well, I don't even think and that's all they have. I, I don't think. I, I think it'll all think. be integrated into your brain. That's what I'm saying. I'm Microsoft. legit. Oh my god. No, that's... I'm not even joking. I genuinely think that. Okay, real quick. I said it, and I'll always say I mean, it. And I've real quick. I'm sorry, Evan. I'm, we'll get yeah, to you go, one second. Go. Yeah. I have noticed because I've been saying it a lot. I've noticed a lot of other people saying it, but the word genuinely, I've just is integrated in my like every other sentence I'm saying genuinely. Like I just. <laughs> It's 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 strange, and just because, um, I think, and I and I don't know when where the break was when people kept like saying literally, like I am so literally dead or whatever. And so this is your this is your little the, protest to that. Well, no, <laughs> that. And I've done it. I've done it so naturally that like I'll just be talking, and then just to emphasize it, it just seems like a good word. But yeah, I'm catching myself saying it more and more often, and I've catch like people on YouTube videos saying it. And I've catch some of my friends saying yeah, it. Yeah, I do. And I do a like, lot of the same thing. Where like I'll, I'll have one adjective that I really, really like for an extended period. But like, of time. you guys don't use genuinely a lot, because I feel like Evan. I feel like every you say genuinely, uh, not quite I, a lot. I say but, it a decent amount. Yeah. So I just I don't know. I just think that's really not like a ton, a ton, but right. And it's just you just you kept, you notice those things. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. weird because no one says literally anymore. Like God, I literally wanted. Yeah, I know, literally never say that word. Yeah, exactly. So, but anyways, Evan, back to you. I just I just think that's so <laughs> weird. It, the, the human language is such a I'm, weird. The place. human language. Yeah. The, uh-huh. the the evolution of the English language just in our lives is oh, weird. Right. The evolution. Of I the do human remember language. what I was going to say now. So that's <laughs> great. Go ahead. Thank you. All Evan. right. I'm glad um, I didn't make you forget what you <laughs> no, were saying. No, you're good. Um, you you were talking about like this this stuff being integrated into our heads and typing it out, but like oh, I wholeheartedly it, it's it's there over my well, body. black mirror, dude, <laughs> just well, right there. Sure, but at the same time, like you're talking about 
our kids doing this realistically just with the age we're at we'll probably be having kids in like less than 10 years and i really don't think the technology will be there by that point Mm. that's kind of my point too well okay because because what when did vr come out VR came out when, like, like okay when 20... when it started existing or when like this, like, this okay, big let's say, let's more say market craze HG, that we're seeing now. HTC Vive when did, when did that come out that was like 2015 like, that sounds say within the last two to three years yeah with, when 15 then... or 16 I would say yeah yeah okay so think I just I feel like at this point now we're making we're making huge jumps like before we needed to get to that the and obviously the accessibility of this uh, science and technology sure. Maybe this this integrated technology will only be for the richy rich people, but I'm still it still will be a thing. I I wholeheartedly believe that that will happen. What will it be? Will it just be you, you put a chip? Twenty twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Okay, cool. Um, will it be a little chip that you put on the side of your head and then it like measures like brain waves and then it can project something? Maybe um, maybe it might be simple as that, but my... I feel like integrate. I'm sorry, real quick. Ahead, no, you're good. Sorry, just real quick. Integrated will happen. What the extent of it? I don't know. Go ahead. I think there's going to be too many laws and regulations for it to be widespreadly used during our lifetime. That's but kind I mean, of like, my thought. But like, there's so but with technology now, it's actually al- like altering, not altering your brain, but right. No, you it, per- augmenting, augmenting your uh, yeah. normal. The and I feel like quality. a lot of people really won't be into that idea. And there's no. also there's also the fact Blake that just like hates everything. There's also the fact that including me, there's still an awful lot that we don't know about neuroscience in general how the brain works i don't think i don't think we're really very close to a point where we we can accurately project people's thoughts but you don't think like some rich mogul is going to be like look corner all of my money into this market let's build something i why would they to be a uh, 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 pedestrian, be what is it? What is the word? Not pedestrian. What is it? Uh, venture capitalist. To be a venture capitalist. To to be the the at the uh, foot of the frontier. To, to be well, the the Elon Musk of neuroscience. Exactly. Well, sure. But I mean, Elon like... Musk wants to shoot cars through tunnels to like get us through L.A. traffic. Obviously, us as a uh, figurative uh-huh. speech, but the royal we. Yeah, I guess. Sure. That. Exactly. Uh-huh. But and so I I I think that you know uh, insert rich person. He's going to say, you know what. I want to stick something on my head, and he'll. And sure, he might even be the test monkey. Stick something on my head. If you can project my brain waves uh, onto this screen, uh, because you can measure the pulses, because you drill something in my brain, whatever it is, I don't know what. I think that's possible, and within ten to fifteen years, hundred percent. Especially like our, uh, you know, our theoretical kids like going through high school, hundred percent. I think will. You know, the, the daily classroom, because, I mean, even think about it like in, uh, you know, the 90s and 80s and stuff like that. Sure, it wasn't severely different between the 80s and 90s, but you take the 80s to the 20s to the t- 2010s, whenever we were going through high school. Mm-hmm. It's the, 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 the technology. Used, used, sure. the, yeah, exactly. Like I, I even remember in middle school, the ginormous uh, Elmo projectors or whatever, like where you click the button and it lights up and then you can write yeah. in Sharpies and stuff like that. Yeah. Now you have like this digitized, small, sleek designed Elmo. I think they're called Elmos. Um, and it's like better picture, better quality, and you can do a bunch more stuff with it. So even just those simple tools that we use, I definitely, I'm sorry to go on a soapbox right here. I definitely think it's possible that, you know, in 10 to 15 years, kids will be like, uh, uh, Hey Blake, did you, did you put in your nano chip today to record your daily sessions? Well, sounds Blake like won't. Terminator to me. Blake, Blake's going to be like, <laughs> Chuck, you can't, you can't. I'm going to name my kid Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, don't listen to anyone the teachers – don't listen to anything the teachers are saying. It's all propaganda uh, perpetrated by the liberal media. Who do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pi- picturing you in – Less than uh, Like I'm goddamn boys. Waylon Jennings over here. You think I'm – Oh, yeah, by the way, I got to leave. I got a clan rally to go to. <laughs> oh, my God. I am, dude. Jesus. Well, no. I just – I don't know. You, but, like, okay, so you're, tell, you're hey, telling Chuck. me Chuck. Like, <laughs> Chuck is not a bad name. I think Chuck is cool. I have an uncle Chuck. Anyways, um, what was I, what was I saying? So you're not saying, so, like, let's say a insert private company number one. They say, look, everybody, we're going to make your lives cooler by integrating these with hospitals. And so when you're unconscious and helping doctors read your brain waves, you can sign a waiver or something to let if doctors. If you're unconscious, you can sign a waiver? Well, um, whatever. Sign a waiver Sign before, waiver you, before, before you went. Gosh, Blake. <laughs> who's the asshole now? Jeez. It sounds Still like Still you. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. But, uh, but yeah, and it's like 
it starts with medicine and it starts with just doctors use it to to check your neurological pathways I, then it's like in 10 years now we can integrate it in schools and so then kids can wear these things and they attach to their heads and then it like records the information so that parent at home can see what your kid is doing in school i don't know if it'll be that nice. extreme well th- but <laughs> still still something something situ- sim- similar to that Big or brothers i don't I love Big in Brother. Soviet Russia. The show. Okay, Twister have you guys real quick? You. No, we're not talking about the. The this, show Big Brother is no. so good. I love it. It's. Uh, have you guys seen it? No. Don't shake your heads at me and answer the question so we can move on. My, I've watched one episode. And with who? Just by yourself? My sister. Okay. My sister loves that show. It's such a good show. It show. is. It's awesome. It's the downfall of the American television. That's hurtful. All right. It's, anyway, yeah. But uh, but it's yeah. right up there with Jersey Shore. I don't know. I just well, I don't think it's Jersey Shore level, but no, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Just technology is crazy. So I definitely think in ten to years, ten ten to years, <laughs> ten to years, <laughs> ten to years, we'll have uh, uh, shit like that. So man, the human language is hard to hard Dude, to come by. I can't by, speak huh? human. It's it's really <laughs> it. so, so ignorant. <laughs> um, speaking of humans, uh, do you hear about that guy um, who touched all the Olympic? Uh, ladies yeah the gymnast coach getting 175 years i saw that yeah Yeah. Yeah. good good. judge said something like it was an honor and a privilege to To give give you to give you the life sentence or something Mm -hmm. like that or the i think she said death sentence or something like Mm -hmm. that so um yeah i don't know i just that's good is it good blake (laughs) (laughs) hell yeah so I don't know. I'm out of topics. You guys got anything? We're, we're like coming up on the end of the podcast, anyways. So, uh, on the spot, here we go. Blake, how was that clan rally you went to? Oh my god, <laughs> it was I hot. Have, I, have to, I, have I imagine so. Just I was, sitting, I was under sweating. Those Who cut for... the holes in these hoods? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see a damn thing. Willard's wife will make your own goddamn <laughs> bags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jingo and Jean. Racism is bad. Okay, you better like clarify that. What? Oh, no, Blake, some... is not, Blake is not a racist. It's okay. He just he hates Big Brother and he hates government and he hates all people, including me. So, I mean, yeah, it's a given. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, um, after the way you treated me today, man, I was doing some pretty harsh shit. That was that was really just a savage. You kept digging beating. the hole. Yeah, that's you know what okay. digs a hole in my boots. You have what? boots. Yes, you have boots. I do have boots. Go in your living or go in your room and show me your boots right now. These are my boots. Get your right feet here. out of my those boots. Are, those are your boots, <laughs> not your boots. Anyways, uh, <laughs> there's a snake in my boots. Toys R Us closed 180 stores. Good. Did they really? Mm-hmm. Dang. Toys R Us is garbage. It is. Are you really? Are you being serious? Toys R Us. I mean, since the last time I was in there was when I was 10. So I remember the good old days of Toys R Us. Going in there, getting Batman and Star Wars Legos, like. Every other month or whatever, yeah. dude. Those are good old days. Yeah, I, it was good old days. I I, I just feel like I just I'm miss not... Legos, man. Oh my gosh, so much. <laughs> I feel like so I'm great. not surprised that the uh, uh, the Toys R Us isn't doing so hot. I feel like like back when we were we lads, I feel like a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of what they they had like some like events going on for whatever was big at the time, and they don't now. It's it really is just a store. For Toys something R Us that you is can just typically... like a big party city. It kind of yeah, it it really is. Like it's kind of just a big store for stuff you can already find elsewhere. So I'm almost yeah, surprised they've online. lasted this long. So they've they're they're key, a niche niche niches niche niche or niche niche niche. They're just not <laughs> that word. Niche. They're just like dying for the same reason Sears died because they're just not keeping up to the with trends. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, um, I'd say that. Yeah, because kids are obsessed with electronics nowadays. They're not as Obsessed they about the new Batman electronic action stuff. action figure that's coming out or whatever. Well, to bounce off what Evan was saying, I think yeah, it is accessible everywhere else. Whereas I think Target or Target, well, yes, Target has okay. The stuff Target's Toy amazing. Toys. Target's amazing. <laughs> um, but definitely, Toy Story is not. You don't Toy Story. God, I can't speak to. Oh my god, human Target languages. sponsor us. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, Toys R Us. Uh, you know, you go to a place where you think you know, young kids, games, whatever. You thought Toys R Us, but now you go young kids, games. That's Target or some other place GameStop. that, uh, yeah, whatever that can uh, uh, have that accessible to people. GameStop. Um, <laughs> GameStop is cool. I worked there for Don't a little bit. Us, no, I would love GameStop to sponsor me. GameStop, I will do not sponsor, sponsor this. Anyways, um, what I want to end on, in. what I want to end on, now. is your guys' take on the uh, NFL um, blocking uh, the police st- hashtag police stand uh, 
pamphlet that the uh, National Americans Veteran Association uh, uh, submitted. You guys heard about this at all? I, I not heard a absolutely. Thing about okay, it. all right. Give so, us a rundown. So, okay, real quick. Um, uh, when you're actually at the stadium, you get mm-hmm. pamphlets for advertisements and whatever else, and sure. blah blah blah, and everything. So uh, the American Veterans Association, um, they had originally were going to have a pamphlet, and it was just this pamphlet that said like, "Please respect the soldiers," or or like, uh, "We honor our soldiers," something like that. Stand so, for those that can't stand. A, you know, like fighting boilerplate, you boilerplate, like just patriotic stuff. Sure. Um, so then, what happened was, uh, according to according to the story, um, the American Association they then pulled because uh, originally the NFL granted that and they said, yeah, you can use that. We'll just we'll have that. But then they pulled that back and they said we want to use something else. And they then uh, submitted the hashtag Please Stand, and it was like a guy saluting with the American flag and then just uh, across the uh, pamphlet saying hashtag Please Stand. And the NFL said no. And I think their reasons were, you know, we don't want to get political. You know, obviously this is politically charged uh, idea. Um, right. You know, we want to stay out of it. Keep it, keep it about patriotism. Keep it about America. Perfectly fine or whatever. But don't, you know, pick that side. So, um, I don't know. Is that fair for you guys? I, I, I think I, I think I would say, given the context of what was happening in the league earlier this year, I would say that absolutely makes sense. I don't, I don't really? know why they would have wanted that to run because there, because there was this huge dispute going on with well, with, right. the, with the players early in early, earlier in the season, uh, not not standing for the flag, and I and I'll be the first to say that I think they were perfectly within their rights to do so, but it certainly raised a big stink, sure. and I don't see why the if the NFL does um, like. Obviously, they get to say what what does or doesn't show up in their stance. Sure, and I, I don't see a reason why they would have brought on what could potentially have been negative press for them. Well, well, because well, I don't know. For for me personally, uh, and I and I guess this just is because I actually saw the ad. It didn't seem very. Uh, yes, okay. Obviously, behind the words is a politically charged uh, statement, but I think the way they presented it, it was very neutral in the stance of you know. Keeping a trend movement, keeping with it. Hey, why don't you just stand? You know, it's not. It's not like a you have to stand. It's not like a lot of. Well, no, you know, but there's there's definitely an imperative there that like, hey, if you're not standing, that's kind of a shitty thing to do. And I and I think that in the in the context of what was happening earlier in the season, I feel like I feel like that's not really something that the NFL would want to put on its fans when they're already dealing with all this flack about it from the players. And really, like, typically it was the owners of teams who were having, if I'm remembering this correctly, who were having major issues with yeah. with this, um, with the players doing this, rather than anything. Not really, not really the owners. What do you talking about? Well, I know a so handful we had of Jer- owners. So we had, right. Jones, but for sure. Jones, for sure. But, like, there were owners that went on to the field, like the Patriots owner went on to the field and knelt with them. Like, yeah, there's oh, really? Cardinals it wasn't, did too. It I, wasn't, I'm not saying it was so universally, it was split. like, every, every it wasn't team even owner split. Was like, there were it, five or six owners that, that really came that, down hard on it. That came yeah. down hard on it. But the rest of the remaining 26, 25 teams mm-hmm. were, you know, all kneeling for it. or not mm-hmm. kneeling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so I, and again, with respect to that as well, I don't, I don't see why the league would let an ad run that was contrary to the views of, from what we're getting here, about so, three quarters of the participants in said league. Okay, so then let me let me, uh, let me paint you this picture. Um, so let's say theoretically it does happen, I, and I'm and I'm just curious what you guys would think would happen. Um, so they do run, they do run the little pamphlet. So you mm-hmm. go to you go to the Super Bowl, you get a handle pamphlet, pamphlet. It's got you know coupons, whatever ads, blah blah blah, whatever, 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 and you're in this nice thing. You know, would people blame the Americans Veterans Association or would they blame the NFL? Uh, probably the NFL. Yeah. Why? If it's an American, so well, if it's the American Vet it's a private company and they can choose to sponsor that or not. Yeah. So, and but, at, at the end of the day, I think the average person going to these games really just <laughs> all, all they would they wouldn't blame a particular group. They would just say, "Wow, that's really tasteless," and kind of move on. Well, well, but, but what I'm saying is, because well, logically. Shouldn't the hate be towards you know this you know uh, the American Veteran Association for trying to make a stance instead of just saying hey let's respect the Patriots or let's or Patriots let's uh, let's respect our veterans let's re- uh, respect those who served in the army or whatever let's respect that they're trying to they're trying to make a stance so what so logically wouldn't you want to get the, <clears throat> mad at the people making the stance not at the people who give the platform it depends on what side you're on so I was reading an article in the Daily Wire that one 
NFL viewership is down 30%. Yeah. Um, and it's, and overwhelmingly it's because of the Anthem protests. Uh-huh. Now NFL is a private company can choose to do whatever it wants. That's, True. that's, that's my stance. And I'm going to stick to that. It's a private company can choose to do whatever it wants. However, there are consequences. So you're alienating half of your fan base essentially. So okay. if you cut it down right down the middle, which, which polls show that it's pretty much right down the middle, people that, don't care about the kneeling versus people that why are you doing this sure. attitude? Um, it's pretty much right down the middle. Viewership is down 30%. The NFL, I would think wouldn't want to alienate any more people than they already have. Okay. Um, and so, but also the trend of NFL viewership has gone down, not by a lot, but significantly this past year and a sure. half or whatever. So it, it yes, Private company can choose to do whatever it wants. However, I think in when you're, if they're get, they've already made their political stance anyway. The mm-hmm. NFL has, and it's definitely a time where they're having this trouble where they need to be careful about. Well, no, their stance about. was players can do whatever they want. Players, sure. players have the free. You know, it's yeah, free it's free it's their free. right to do whatever they want. Absolutely, come hundred percent agree. So, the the to me the them turning down the veterans thing was just them saying we don't agree with that because we've already made our stance on the issue sure. a year ago. So it, so it, it didn't it didn't lighting su- a fire. It didn't, yeah, it didn't surprise me. In fact, yeah. with the Eagles going to the Super Bowl and the Patriots being back in, this is supposed to be a a huge Super Bowl. People have completely forgotten like the anthem issue hasn't been brought up to me in, in a oh, couple sure. of months or so except sure. for yeah. right now. Right. So it people have kind of swept it under the rug. It's gone, it's over with, blah blah blah. But now it's it's they don't want to they don't want the bad press to turn its ugly face when viewership is already yeah. down 30 yeah. percent so yeah. they're gonna do whatever it takes to just you know not raise any more issues so i don't fault the nfl for doing what they did mm-hmm. at, at all like it's okay. your private company do whatever you want but I, understand I, there are consequences yeah. for everything right i i just i uh the, the main point i was trying to get at was just i just think it's interesting how you know it's like you know the uh, for and and, uh, and tell, tell me if this is a logical example, but or not logical, uh, a similar example. Um, like whenever they were having the when they were going to have that Milo Ianopoulos debate, um, it was the university. Yeah, the university was supposed to have the platform, offer the whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. and um, the and Milo Ianopoulos was the guy who uh, had all the radical, horrible, quote unquote, horrible views. Um, and the trolley attitude and stuff like that. But who did everyone get pissed off at? Well, Berkeley, because they how how dare they offer a platform for this uh, voice? So I just I just think it's interesting how people target. Right. Well, that's because people already had dislike for Milo well, right. before. But it wasn't it wasn't there. it wasn't shut down because you know it, it wasn't shut down because Milo and Indianapolis. It was shut down because they attacked Berkeley and they the right students- because of Milo. So it happened with the same thing happened with Ben Shapiro when he went there. And mm-hmm. uh what's her name? The uh um uh, the tall blonde girl that is also right wing. I don't know. Uh whatever whatever her name was. Um that happened the same thing with Ben Shapiro. So people weren't protesting Berkeley. Well but it but, was, but Ben Shapiro and Milo Inopoli, Milo Inopolis, I don't think they received any more hate than they already had. It's not like, oh, all what of a sudden they're talking about Oh, no, ben I Shapiro think... had to had to uh, well, had to say tell his views to Congress because colleges were like under the like about to make rules and states were about to make laws that mm. specified that colleges could ban whoever they wanted. Right, like that he had to testify at well, in but, Congress but, but still, for that. But still, though, that's that's the colleges making this decision. Whereas shouldn't. Then shouldn't shouldn't the hate be towards Ben Shapiro and uh, Milo Yiannopoulos? Then shouldn't it forget forget I think the university? It was. Like, well, okay, well, I guess I guess then I'd have I don't to think they were pro- that. I don't think they were protesting Berkeley. They were well, protesting. No, I think they were, that, that's okay, that's where we did. I think they were protesting the views, the okay. Nazi views that sure. a Jewish Ben Shapiro had, right, or a a gay Jew that. Miley Yiannopoulos had. I think right. they were protesting those. You can see it on Fox News when the well, leader well, then, of Antifa went on and talked to Tuck, talked to Tucker Carlson about it. Sure, and it there was no disdain for Berkeley. It was all hating and bashing people with opposing viewpoints. No, so. and and that's fine. I just and I and I guess that was that was a poor example on my part. I just I, I was trying to make the connection of 
hating the platform, not the individual. So they're hating the NFL, not okay, the... Okay, so when A&M went and uh, was going to give a platform to David Duke... Uh-huh. Um, leader I don't the, know the situation. Well, in Texas A&M was going to give a platform, but the like 90% of the student population mm-hmm. signed a petition or whatever and protested, and he wasn't allowed to speak there. Really? So then it... It was became. It wasn't because of David. Du- it, yeah, it still was because of David Duke. Actually, yeah, mm-hmm. like the student population rose up in Texas A and M. The student population rose up and said, "We don't want David Duke speaking at our campus." I don't know A&M who that guy is. Uh, sponsor us. Who's David Duke? <laughs> don't sponsor us, David no. Duke. If you are listening, who who is not he? Sponsor I don't know. Us. I said A and M. Oh, A and M. Yeah, sure. Texas A and M. Please sponsor. Who, who the heck is David Duke? David Max. Duke. Look him up. I don't want. I got it. Gonna, How my, do you not know? Is history going to be tainted? <laughs> <laughs> is my Any more than it already is with ISP's midget gonna, porn? And... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Davey, all right. I'll look him up later. Anyways, guys, that's the end. Totally uh, <laughs> failed there at the end trying to pour, prove my point. KKK leader. Oh, okay. Thank you. Nice. Um, <laughs> golly, totally didn't get my point across. Anyways, uh, that is the end of the One More Podcast podcast. I appreciate you guys being on. Um, always, of course. Um, my favorite guest to have on here is Blake because he is my favorite, obviously. That's why I poke fun at him all the time. Um, Save it. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Um, anyways, uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, have a good night, day, or afternoon, or whenever you listen to this podcast. You too. Uh, peace thank out. You, man. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you all. And that is the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Just letting you know again that this was sponsored by Haven Cottage Event Center, okay? This thing's coming out end of spring in 2018. That's this year, okay? Small, medium, whatever kind of event that you want, bring it here. They can style it. They can change it. They can get it right just for you, all right? Celebrate whatever you want. Have any kind of business meeting, whatever it is. Just literally your heart's desire. Remember, Haven Cottage Event Center. Everything you need to know is in the description down below how to get in contact with them, okay? All right, cool. Peace out. Thank you.